What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build, where today we're going to be focusing on the new Warlock aspect that's just been released, and we've got a silly but really effective build that you'll be surprised of yourself once you start to play around with it. Using the aspect Frost Pulse and the Vesper of Rage's Exotic, you can create a build that will allow you to freeze and shatter those who get caught in our rift, and will provide you with a full rift and ability return via the Whisper Fragments. And let me just say, after a number of years, the Vesper of Rages is now viable to use without Bungie still not buffing it. This is a build that everyone had on their mind the moment it was announced, with many theory crafting as to how effective it was going to be. And the results have been fantastic, although with a few downsides to it, which you'll all probably be aware of anyways. I will say though that this build works in the same way that the Eye of Another World build works, but with the roles slightly different. They both directly provide a buff in some way or form and can be utilised in whatever content you have in mind, high or low, but they are easily the best choice to pick when you need a simple and straightforward build from the get go. Whether you have the gear or not, after I'm done, you're probably going to want to try this setup out on your end. Now for the subclasses, we will be using the Shape Binder subclass with Ice Flare Bolts, Frost Pulse, and utilising the Whisper of Fishes Fragments to enhance our Stasis Destructive Capabilities. Whisper of Shards for a temporary boost in grenade recharge rate upon stasis destruction. Whisper of Bonds for a boost in super energy upon frozen targets. And Whisper of Refraction for ability regen upon frozen shatters. As you can see, with the new aspect available, we are able to slot in 4 artifact mods to fully invest in making the build the best in category. Upon using a rift, which I would advise you using the healing rift, you'll be able to slow, freeze and then shatter everyone within the radius and then you can reap the rewards of getting a full rift and abilities back, and also get a hefty amount of super energy back like it's nothing. Now the great thing about this setup is that you can mix and match whatever artifacts you want with it, and it will still play in style as presented. This offers a large room of customization, as while the subclass customization is fully on point to your design, it also means that the mods and perks you choose can also benefit from it as well, or not. And when I mean not, I mean you can have a build that focuses entirely on the Warman styles, and still have the subclass set up which will still be beneficial, so like two builds in one. Now for the rift side of things, like I mentioned I would recommend you have the healing rift for longer survivability when pulling this off, as it will require you to get up close and personal. For your grenades, I've chosen to use the dust fill which is a great option to use when up against a large group of enemies, and can be utilised with the rift to slow them down and then activate the rift, etc. For weapons, we're going to need to focus on close range fighting so we can play within the strength of the subclass and exotic. My primary is the Hawthorne's Field Forge Shotgun with opening shot and full auto. The role I have is more suitable for the PvP side of things as opening shot is great for mapping people, and a full auto is perfect for following up with it. In PvE, the role is still good with the exception of opening shot not really being that necessary. Full auto on the lightweight frame will allow me to zip past enemies both in and out of danger, and full auto is perfect for a consistent barrage of damage against a boss or ultra when my one combo doesn't fully work. You'll want to have a shotgun in this slot as well, so you can shatter frozen enemies quickly when in dire situations, and fits the theme as well, although be sure to try and get a shotgun with a damage roll instead, such as the trench barrel or kill clip, which is more beneficial I'd find. As we are up close and personal, a sidearm can also work but only if it produces a high amount of damage via the free type, or if it has a damage buff or perk. Anything else may not produce the required damage to shatter and may end up with the enemies coming out of being frozen, which overall means you lose out on the buff. For my secondary, I'm using the Aikilos SMG with Demolitionist, Dynamic Sway Reduction, and Seraph Rounds. My plan is to pair this up with my Warmind Cell mod, Sheltering Energy, to gain a overshield shield upon Warmind Cell creation, while at the same time utilising the Masterwork to also provide me with a charge with light, so I can also use my Protected Light mod as well for extra defence. And this is how the weapon will be fully used in the build. Its stats and perks are impressive and it's great to use against fallen captains for briefly stunning them, but Warmind Cells and Charged with Light is where we want to be aiming for, and also the same as where you want to be aiming for as well. It also pairs up nicely when combined with a shotgun, as if we have a beefy enemy chasing us down, we can damage them with our SMG and then switch to a shotgun to shut them down completely. Now one thing you can do is get the self AR and shotgun or sidearm, and use that as an alternative pairing as they can both be useful for retaining a full of warm cells as you go. But this might make the build feel kind of out of place with its close quarter style of play. 
For heavy, I've chosen to use the thermal erosion heavy machine gun with bolt spring and killing wind. This is my first time using the weapon, and I highly recommend you try and get one yourself as the Vora has is great for all content, and although it is a rapid fire frame, it's actually quite manageable. Now the idea of the weapon is to use this against the tougher enemies when I can't use my warm and combo on them, so you'll see this weapon be used a lot against the withrins or ultra level enemies, etc. We also have the new perk called Wellspring which acts like a multi trap perk for all of our abilities, and this is handy for the more chaotic situations where you use up all your abilities and need a quick way to garner abilities back. Every time we have an ability or two that are empty, and we use the weapons to get a kill with it, it will give us back an ability energy for that slot and spread it out to others as well. Now in our case here with the build, we shouldn't get into a situation to where we run out of ability energy at all, but it's nice to have just in case, and nice use for a quick fill up. For the stats, we're going to need to heavily focus on the recovery area, and then the resilience, and then anything else after. For the case of recovery, we need to aim as high as possible so we can benefit from the Vespial Rages Exotic and the artifacts at work. Although we will be getting a buff from our Exotic and the Whisper of Refraction, etc., if you want to have your Rift back near instantly, then you're going to need to have it at a reasonable high level. 80 to 100 is a great place to start and end, as at 80, we can get a 51 second cooldown, which sounds like a lot still. But with the exotic bonus of gaining a fast of rift cooldown when surrounded, we can make this work even faster for you. You could also leave it at 70 if you like, but I would recommend you stick with the 80 and above for the full benefit from there on out. For our resilience, this will need to be at 50, roughly, because of the situation we're going to be ending up in. Now, don't go any higher than this if necessary, as we will have the warm and cell mods to help us, and the protective light mod as well. The rest of the stats can be placed into whatever level you like. I would recommend some points into the intellect area as the build can also get your suit back really quickly, under a minute or so. So if that's the type of playstyle you want, I would recommend putting some points into that area there. For our armor, we will be using both charge with light and warm mind mods, so you're going to need to have at least 2 voids, 2 arc, and 1 solo affinity armor piece. Your exotic armor piece won't need to be a specific affinity like most other builds, anything else is fine for it unless you need a specific resistance mod. Now as we've covered the main important parts of the build, here are the mods that we're currently going to be using and generally how it affects the build overall. For our head, we have recovery and protective light mod. For arm, we have resilience, impact induction, anti-barrier submachine gun, and taking charge mod. Chest, we have recovery and concussive dampener times 2 mod. For leg, we have recovery and sheltering energy mod. And for bond, we have minor discipline, thermal overload, perpetration, and stacks on stacks mod. Now I would like to say that this is probably the best Vesper of Rages build to ever be created, and I don't like to be cocky around stuff like this, as stuff like this can change every now and then. But this build is really really good when used how it's supposed to be used. We don't tend to see or even create a lot of rift focused builds in game because of how optional they are, and how good placement and cover can mitigate this use of rifts. But this build here can actually make them deadly to play against, and all you have to do is jump into the chaos, get yourself surrounded, and then activate your rift to both freeze and then shatter them. Doing all of that will activate your artifact for whatever you have slotted in, and you'll get overshield while staying in the rift as well. So anyone not caught by the blast won't be able to one shot you or put you further into danger. And the funny thing about this build is how the Vespa of Radius was considered a meme exotic at one point, because of how low ended and useless it was. With added in benefits of the aspect and artifacts, we now have made the exotic viable for us to repeat over and over again. And yes, I know the exotic is still a meme to use outside of the build, but at least it can now do something to a degree, which I think we can all agree on. We also have to give props to the Warmind Cell and Protective Light Moth for further damage reduction, as chucking ourselves into danger is viable but also extremely risky when things don't go as planned. A build like this is very viable for all content, including high end content, as long as you know what you're doing, as the defensive option should be enough for you to survive the higher tier content against a deadly shot or two from a hobgoblin. Like I mentioned earlier, the build can be used anywhere as it works in a similar manner that Variety's Brow and Eye of Another World do, as in having it on will benefit without impeding or forcing you to use a specific playstyle. Although you're not going to be using your Rift up close and personal in high end nightfalls, when surrounded by unstoppables, but you can use it to freeze them and give you and your teammates enough time 
to get out and refocus your DPS elsewhere. The only practical downside to using this build is the amount of danger you have to put yourself into to make it work in your favour. To fully get the most out of the build, you'll need to be surrounded by a number of enemies to which, depending on your activity level, should be fairly easy to do and repeat numerous times. But the higher the content gets, the more risky it becomes to do this, as at the highest difficulty on Nightfalls, you're not going to be throwing yourself at enemies because of the amount of damage they do, and even having the extra protection mods available can only do so much for you in the higher tier content. Your best bet is to use this build cautiously, the higher and more varied content is, before delving deep into it. Do that and you'll have an extremely high and versatile build to rely on for whatever content you have in mind, even PvP to a very small and slight degree. If you can catch them out, then well, I believe the kill is all yours. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.